108 teams to go in my road to predict all 131 teams this college football offseason. And we're on to what I think is going to be one of the more exciting teams in 2022. They definitely were an exciting team in 2021. And that's the Purdue Boilermakers. They pulled off two top five upsets last year. Iowa and Michigan State both fell in upset losses at the hands of this Purdue team. And this is a Purdue team that returns a lot of guys that I really, really like in 2022. And I think this is a chance for Purdue to have a pretty special to have a pretty special season in West Lafayette. So can Purdue have that special year and get to their first ever Big Ten championship game? Or will the Purdue Boilermakers simmer down and maybe not be as much of a surprise as you may think they will be? What's up, Tailgaters? My name is Tailgate Nate. Welcome to my channel. I'm predicting all the teams in the nation this year, which means I'm doing your favorite team if they are an FBS team, of course. So hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, so you know when that video gets, up, gets uploaded. And guys, I say this in every one of my videos, but this especially goes out to Purdue fans in this one. You guys are going to know your favorite team a lot better than me. So Purdue fans, if you feel like I got something wrong, you want to add something onto the video, please leave it in the comment section down below. Be happy to read through them. Purdue in 2022, they are my fifth ranked team in the Big Ten Conference. I really, really like what this Purdue team has coming back, has coming in, which we'll get to in a little bit. But I really like how they played last year. They were 9-4 and four last year. They got a win in an absolute classic in a bowl game against Tennessee, which, again, the, the past is the past at this point. But maybe Tennessee got robbed from. Um, the, the, that Tennessee probably got robbed from, again, with that touchdown at, towards the end. But, hey, it doesn't matter. Purdue had a 9-win season last year, um, and that's what it's going to go down in the record books as. And they had a pretty balanced season. You would expect this team's offense to be good for how dynamic it seemed. Uh, 300, excuse me, 439 and a half yards along with around 29 points per game. And their defense as well, though. This is what really, really surprised uh, me, at least when I looked at the stats. But thinking back on it, this was a pretty solid Purdue defense last year. It was fifth in the Big Ten in yards per game with 341 and a half and only allowing... 20 and a half points per game last year. And that's really, really good statistics on both sides of the ball. Of course, this passing attack is one of the best in the Big Ten. Uh, in fact, I think it's the second best in the Big Ten, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. Um, and their run defense, really, really good. They had a lot of good players up front last year. Um, but looking at this Purdue talent, what they have losing, what they have coming back, uh, Jack Plummer, who was that backup quarterback last year, for most of the year at least, is gone. 864 yards, seven touchdowns, no picks last year, but he has gone from this program. Xander Horvath gone out of the uh, running back room, 320 yards and three touchdowns last year. Also, the wide receiver room loses your three best guys. David Bell uh, was <clears throat> a Bolitnikoff finalist with 1,286 yards and six touchdowns. Jackson Anthrop was solid as well, 570 yards and five touchdowns. But Milton Wright, who led this team in touchdowns with seven, also 732 receiving yards, is on academic probation. So has been cut from the roster because of his grades and will not play football for Purdue in 2022. Um, so there are some guys leaving the wide receiver room that are really talented. Otherwise, on the defensive side, George Karloftis, one of the best defensive ends in the country last year. Four and a half sacks, 36 tackles, two passes defended, was a machine for the Boilermakers. Uh, also, you got guys like Jalen Alexander, Demarcus Mitchell that are gone off this linebacking group. Uh, Jalen Alexander had 113 tackles last year. That led the team. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And then Demarcus Mitchell had four and a half sacks last year, which was second most, or tied for second most, I should say, on the team with George Karloftis. Um, also in the defensive back room, you got Marvin Grant and Dedrick Mackey gone as well. Uh, Marvin Grant, 76 tackles, and Dedrick Mackey had three picks for this Boilermaker defense last year. But coming back on this team are a lot of guys that I really like, including their quarterback, Aiden O'Connell. I think he, flat out, I think he's the second best quarterback in the Big Ten and a top 25 quarterback in the nation. Had 3,712 yards, 28 touchdowns, 11 interceptions at a 71% clip last year. If he can cut back on the interception numbers, I think Aiden O'Connell is due for a very, very special season in a Boilermaker uniform. You also got King Doru, the leading rusher from last year, coming back. 533 yards and two touchdowns last year. 
uh, for, for the Kings. In the wide receiver room, you return Brock Thompson and TJ Sheffield. Um, between them, you had around 800 yards and nine touchdowns last year. But they're also getting two really, really solid transfers that can help boost this wide receiver room from the University of Iowa. That's Tyrone Tracy and Charlie Jones, both guys who probably were not involved or definitely who were not involved as much in the Iowa offense as they probably should have been last year. But they are two very, very solid options. Two of the better receivers um, that were coming out of that uh, Iowa program. Uh, and Purdue got them both. And that is huge. You also returned tight end Payne Durham, who had 467 yards and six touchdowns last year. On the defensive side of things, still a lot of guys I like. A couple names that stand out to me. Uh, Kydron Jenkins, who led the team last year with five sacks. Um, also, Branson Dean, Jack Sullivan, uh, chipped in three sacks of their own last year. Kieran Douglas. Uh, 67 tackles last year with a pick. And then defensive back position, Jalen Graham, I think is my favorite player on this defense coming into 2022. Can play linebacker, can play defensive back, and he, he is just a phenomenal talent in my opinion. Uh, 64 tackles, seven passes defended, two interceptions last year. Really, really good numbers from him. Also, Corey Trice, Cam Allen coming back as well. Um on this defensive side of the ball. So lots of talent coming back for Purdue and you guys can maybe start to see why I'm liking this Purdue team to have a special year in 2022. But let's look at their schedule before you guys can really see what I think about Purdue. So you start off the game at home, conference game, Thursday night against Penn State. And that I think is gonna be one of the more interesting week one games to watch um, that's not played on Saturday. So one of the more week interesting weekday games to watch. Probably the most interesting weekday game to watch. If I'm going to be honest with you guys, that is going to be a phenomenal game. That's just what a game that is going to be. Um, Penn State has had some questions over the past couple of seasons. So they're trying to get back uh, on the map, trying to get back uh, to a point uh, where Penn State can start to be contenders again. Um, and they got the talent on that roster to do so. That's going to be an interesting one. And non-conference, you got Indiana State, FAU, and then squeeze in between there a road game against Syracuse, none of which are really interesting to me. We'll talk more about that here in a little bit. In terms of more conference games, on the road against Minnesota, Maryland, Wisconsin, Illinois, and Indiana. And at home, of course, against Penn State, but also Nebraska, Iowa, and Northwestern. So talking about some of these games a little bit. Again, that Penn State game at the beginning of the year, we're going to come back to it, but that is the most interesting game on the schedule, in my opinion. Again, none of the non-conference games really interest me. On the road against Syracuse in the Carrier Dome, maybe Syracuse has pulled off upsets there before, but I just don't see it. Um, I think Purdue is going to be a pretty good, solid, good team this year, uh, and Syracuse is a team that I just don't think is going to do much in 2022 when you look at the conference slate again it's interesting but those last three games on the schedule are games that you have to win so it's games where purdue you get all your tough games out of the way first and then you should be able to move on to games where you should be able to get some wins uh down the line there against teams like illinois northwestern and indiana although those illinois indiana games watch out because they can be a little bit tricky um in terms of that, though, the five games right in the middle of the schedule are your most important. Minnesota, Nebraska, Wisconsin, Iowa are all going to be jockeying for position atop the Big Ten West. Um, and they all got their reasons to be there. Minnesota's got a pretty good defense coming back. or It's got a really good defense, I should say, coming back from last year, including an experienced quarterback with an experienced wide receiver room and one of the best running backs in the nation. Nebraska, this is Scott Frost's best team yet, and he did not mess around in the offseason. Wisconsin and Iowa are two very terrific defensive teams that maybe just need a little help from their quarterback play in order to get to Indianapolis. So, And then squeezing a road game there against Maryland that uh, is looking to get back to another bowl game and looking to take that next step this year. So really interesting schedule here for the Purdue Boilermakers. And guys, I do not do game-by-game -game predictions. I do more of a percentage-based outlook. Tell me, predict the team's record. Red, you're not going to win the game. Orange, you're still probably not going to win. But hey, it's college football, and upsets can happen. Yellow are your 50-50 high upset potential games. Games in yellow, green are games that you should win. But again, watch out for teams on the other side of the ball. And games in green, games that you should win. So again, they're non-conference slate. I see them winning all three of those. Again, Syracuse in the Carrier, do in the carrier Dome could be interesting. But again, I don't really see... 
Syracuse being much of a threat to this Purdue team with as much talent on it as it has. I already said the three games at the end of the year should be able to win those. Although, again, on the road against Illinois, on the road against Indiana, got to watch out for them. Could be tricky, tricky games to win. That middle stretch there, though, I think is the most important stretch for Purdue of this season by far. I mean, you got all your tough games and all the games that you got to win right there. At least I would say you got to win three out of those five. If you can win three out of those five games right there, um, then I think Purdue is in excellent shape to go ahead and make the Big Ten championship game uh, and get move on to Indianapolis. Uh, again, I've all kind of stated my reasons. Minnesota's got a lot of experience coming back. Uh, Maryland also, same thing. Maybe need a little help from their defense, but that's a program looking to take that next step. Nebraska, this is Scott Frost's best team yet. Casey Thompson, um, a, a, a huge pickup in, in the transfer portal uh, for them. You also got guys like um, Trey Palmer, Isaiah Garcia Castaneda coming over, Tommy Hill in the portal as well. Nebraska did really, really well in the portal. And then Wisconsin, Iowa, as I've said, these are two elite defensive teams and they have been for a long time. It's just a matter of not whether Graham Mertz and then whoever starts for Iowa, whether it be Alex Padilla or Spencer Petras, can step up and improve that quarterback play on the team. But the most important game, single most important game on the schedule to me, is that game against Penn State. If they can start out the season at home with a win against a Penn State team that may have a national ranking coming into 2022, that's going to be a huge, huge win for this Purdue team. And it can spark what is going to be a phenomenal season for Purdue, or what could be a phenomenal season for Purdue. I have Purdue going 9-3 and three in 2022. Yes, I think the Purdue Boilermakers are going to be 9-3 and three and have the best record, not necessarily in the Big Ten, but the best record out of any team in the Big Ten West, which you've seen if you've watched all my other Big Ten videos up to this point. Um, again, standings will come out at a later date, but Purdue, I think, is due for such a special season, guys. I think Aiden O'Connell is due for a special season. I think the run game, although it might not be super prevalent, is going to be there, and it's going to be effective when it needs to be. The wide receiver room, even though it doesn't have a lot of big-name guys, I think is one of the most all-round talented wide receiver rooms in the Big Ten. And that defense, I still think, while it may be taking a little step back from last year, um, it very well could be taking two steps forward, right? It could be taking one step back with the talent and then two steps forward and improve its statistics uh, and play from last year. This is a Purdue team I think is in for a special season that I could see going 10-2, and two, but I'm going to go ahead and say that Purdue at least makes a bowl game and goes 9-3. and three. Let me know what you guys think. I also think this team has a very, very good shot to get to Indianapolis. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Anything you can helps out the channel a lot. And remember to play hard, but tailgate harder. I'll see all you guys in the next video. Goodbye.